Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be talking about Gibbs energy. Right, you want important equations? I'm going to give you a very, very important equation today. One of the most important equations in all of chemistry. And that is to do with this uh, thermodynamic function called Gibbs energy. Right, so with all of these thermodynamics videos that uh, I've been doing, the end goal was to talk about spontaneity, about being able to figure out whether or not a particular chemical process is going to proceed by itself, is going to proceed spontaneously. And we've seen in previous videos that the value of enthalpy doesn't tell you anything about spontaneity. The value of entropy doesn't tell you anything about spontaneity, but the value of Gibbs energy is what tells you about spontaneity. So why did we have to go through all of the heat and work and enthalpy and internal energy and entropy and all of that sort of stuff? Why did we have to go through that? Precisely because of this equation here. Delta G is a equal to delta H minus T delta S. Okay. Often students ask me which equations do they have to know for the final exam. That is definitely one of them. Let's put it in a red box because it is very, very important. Okay. Delta G, Gibbs Energy, named after the American scientist of the 19th century, the wonderfully named Josiah Willard Gibbs. And you can see that it is made up of an enthalpy term and an entropy term, which is why we had to go through all of the preliminaries, finding out about enthalpy, finding out about entropy, in order to make sense now of this thing that we are calling Gibbs energy. Right, really important equation. How does Gibbs energy tell you anything about spontaneity? The sign of the value of Gibbs energy tells you all about spontaneity. If delta G is negative, then your reaction or your process is spontaneous. And if delta G, the value of delta G is positive, then your process, your reaction, whatever, is not spontaneous. Simple as that. Okay? So all that we need is to calculate our values of delta G, find out whether it's positive or negative, <clears throat> and then that's going to tell us whether our process is spontaneous or not. Okay, fairly nice and straightforward. A couple of little tricks in here, obviously, as with <laughs> all of chemistry seemingly. Right, first things first, um, we saw that enthalpy was a state function. We saw that entropy was a state function. Gibbs energy also is a state function, which is great for us because that means that we can do Hess's law type calculations using Gibbs energies. And what we would use for those Hess's law type calculations would be Gibbs energy of formation values. And again, like enthalpy of formation and standard entropy values, you will find these in tables in books. So you can look these up and you can use these to calculate now values of Gibbs energy change for any particular reaction. Okay. So that's nice and straightforward. We can do it that way, or we can use this equation here. So more often than not, we find ourselves using this particular equation here <clears throat> because of the fact that generally enthalpy and entropy values are tabulated. So you use those tabulated values to calculate your Gibbs energy values um, using that particular equation. So let's look at an example of using this equation here, okay? And so the chemical reaction that we're going to be looking at is the combustion of pentane, okay? C5H12, and if we react, react that with 8 moles of oxygen, we are going to get 5 carbon dioxides and 6 waters, like so, okay? Now, um... What do we need in order to determine delta G for this reaction? 
Well, obviously we need our values of delta H and delta S. So these are going to be given to us. And I'm giving this as a very, very general equation. We can, of course, put our little standards there as well. So let's do that. Um, it doesn't make that much difference, just means you're operating under standard conditions, okay? So for this particular reaction here, delta H standard is equal to a whopping negative 3512 kJ per mole. As you might expect, because it's the combustion of a hydrocarbon, it's going to give out an awful lot of heat, okay? And delta RS standard for this uh, is equal to minus 416. Uh, joule per mole per Kelvin, okay? And um, would we expect that? Yes, we've got lots of moles of gas here, eight of them going to five moles of gas here. So you might expect that the entropy change for that should be negative. Okay, so let's do the calculation now, and you might think, yep, this looks pretty straightforward. All we're going to be doing is plugging these numbers into this equation. <laughs> Do the calculation, punch them in the calculator, blah, 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 blah. Yes, but a very, very common mistake here, a very, very common mistake. Look at the units, and you've got to make sure that your units are consistent. And this is where a lot of students fall down in these calculations. The unit of delta H is the kilojoule per mole. The unit of delta S is the joule per mole per Kelvin. Okay, those units are inconsistent. You can't have kilojoules and joules in the same equation. So either you've got to convert your enthalpy change to joules per mole, or you've got to convert your entropy change to joule, sorry, to kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. I find that the first is easier to do because all that you need to do there is multiply by a thousand. So let's go through and do the calculation now. So delta G standard, is going to be minus 3512 times 10 to the 3 joule per mole multiplied by, and again, we're doing all of this, I, <laughs> I neglected to mention, of course, we're doing all of this at 298 Kelvin, 25 degrees. And remember, give your temperature in Kelvin, never degrees. Okay, so there's your delta H, your T, 298 K times your delta S, minus 416. And that is, I'm going to run out of room here, joule per mole per Kelvin. And you do the calculation, and that then comes out at minus 3.39 times 10 to the power of 3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so what's important in this is in fact not really the numerical value, but it's the sign of the numerical value. The sign is negative. And so from what we said before, if your delta G for a particular process is negative, then you would expect that process to be spontaneous. Once it started, it should occur by itself without sort of any external influences. And you'd expect, yeah, here we have a hydrocarbon, we're gonna burn it in oxygen. <laughs> you'd expect that that is gonna be a spontaneous process, and it most definitely is. Okay, um, let's have a further look at this equation, because it is kind of interesting. It is made up of two parts, this equation, okay? <clears throat> there's two parts to it. There's a delta H standard, and there's the delta S standard here. Now, we ultimately want delta G standard to be negative, don't we? Right, so... Um, We've got the possibility that delta H standard could be either positive or negative. Delta S standard could also be positive or negative. So if we make a little table here, delta H and delta S values, okay? So delta H could be positive and it could be negative, and delta S could also be either positive or negative. So let's tabulate these possibilities and see what this means. Okay. So, let's say that uh, delta H is negative and delta S is positive. What are we going to get here? We're going to get a negative minus a positive. 
And if you take a negative minus a positive, that is always negative. Okay? That's always negative. So therefore, that's always going to be spontaneous under those conditions. Okay? Now, if delta H is positive and delta S is negative, then you've got a positive minus a negative. Positive minus a negative is always positive, and so therefore, under those conditions, the reaction is always going to be non-spontaneous if delta H is positive and delta S is negative. Now, what about when they're the same sign? Okay, so positive and positive. We'd have a positive minus a positive, wouldn't we? Positive minus a positive can be positive or it can be negative, depending on the relative sizes of these guys here. Positive minus positive. If this is large and positive, then a positive minus a positive gives you a negative. How's that going to be large? If the temperature is high. So this is going to be spontaneous at high temperature and non-spontaneous at low temperature. Okay? And the converse is going to be true if we've got negative and negative. Okay? A negative minus a negative can be negative and it can be positive. Again, depending on whether this one is bigger than that, whether that term is bigger than that. So at low temperature, a negative minus a negative is going to give you a negative. So that's going to be spontaneous at low temperature. If the temperature is high, then this term is going to be bigger than that one, and so therefore we're going to be non-spontaneous at high temperature. Okay. So that's a little thing to remember about Gibbs energy, that it does depend on the sign and the magnitude of both delta H and delta S. Okay, a final word on Gibbs energy, and that is what does spontaneous really mean? What does um, the term spontaneous mean? Let's have a look at an equation that we have seen before in previous videos, sodium bicarbonate giving sodium carbonate, solid, plus liquid water, plus CO2 gas, okay? And delta Rg standard for that, the Gibbs energy of reaction for that, is plus 24.2 kJ per mole. Now again, the actual value is not too important, it's, it's the sign that's important. The sign saying that this is positive, so therefore, the reaction is non-spontaneous. Hmm. Now, this is really careful. You've got to be really careful with this. Does that then mean that if we just took some sodium bicarbonate, that it would never turn into sodium carbonate, liquid water, and CO2 gas? And the answer is no, that's not correct. Okay. In fact, this reaction would proceed in the forward direction. But it would never get to the point where the pressure of CO2 equals P standard, the standard pressure. And that is because we are using delta G standard as our criterion of spontaneity. Okay, delta G standard only applies to standard conditions, a very, very, very narrow set of conditions that tell us about spontaneity, okay? So, yes, this reaction will in fact go, but it will not go to the point where the pressure of CO2 gets to equal P standard. That's what this means. Now that is, it's a, maybe a bit of a difficult point to get your head around, but that's what this means, okay? And then you might ask the question, well, sheesh, if, if, if delta G standard only refers to standard conditions, why don't we just talk about delta G, which refers to any conditions? Good question. The answer is delta G standard does only refer to a very, very um, narrow set of conditions, but as we will see in subsequent videos, it is related to a very, very important thing called the equilibrium constant. And we will talk about that in uh, upcoming videos anyway, okay? So there you go, Gibbs energy, the criterion of spontaneity. And with that, our talk about thermodynamics, our series of videos about thermodynamics is at an end. 
Um, but don't worry, we'll be seeing delta H and delta G and everything again. Very important concepts in all of chemistry. So until then, safe studies and we will see you next time.